The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. How much flossing looks like repeatedly stabbing yourself in the butt and crotch. Oh my god! Yeah, you, you're the one who chose to floss furiously. No one, I just said do a dance. You floss I, so I've hard. I've dislocated yeah. every bone in my body. Holy shit. You it was worth really it though. Hard. Hello everybody and welcome to my brother, my brother, me and advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I am your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm your sweet baby brother in 30 under 30 media luminary, Griffin McElroy. And what a thrill it is to be here in Cleveland. Um, oh, you've heard of it. <laughs> uh, we are here, um, and we are so grateful to those of you that bought tickets to make the long journey out. <laughs> Thousand of There's you. Like it doesn't make it sound like you. this is our community theater production that just our dad's Thanks friends. Thanks for giving us to. a chance. Yeah. Um, but this is this grassroots live show. <laughs> we want you. But there's that, and also our families are still a great with Lodge in Cincinnati. So <laughs> it's gonna get nasty tonight. We talked about it, and we. This is gonna, we want it to be a vile show. <laughs> we, what we, we want from this show is, you know, a lot of your friends maybe didn't wanna come because they don't like us. And we they want, think we were like smelly or, or whatever. We're like terrible or not funny or whatever. And um, Wait, we what? want you to go back to them and, and be like, you missed. Well, I won't say missed, it was vile. <laughs> you made the right choice in not coming because it was. Profane. We've we've had to not publish a lot of live shows due to like technical sound issues. This or one Star might Wars issues. Or Star Wars issues. Star Wars centric issues. This one might just be too hot for TV. Yeah, sure. We might, and if this one goes up, it'll be ten minutes long. Not that they let us on TV anymore. No, not anymore. <laughs> we had. A, I mean, we, technically, unless you had some way to connect your streaming device to a TV, we weren't allowed on TV in the first fair, place. That's fair. That's fair. But anyway. We are here. We do advice. We're brothers. We're nasty. We're nasty. No, we're not. We're nasty. <laughs> we're three top tier nasty boys. We're m nasty middle aged men. <laughs> okay, that's way worse. That's so much worse. We're than three. So much worse. No, listen. We're three nasty middle aged men that bring their dad with them everywhere. We're nasty. We're three dads who hang three nasty dads three who nasty hang out with dads their nasty dad. Who hang out with their nastier dad. With yeah. two musician nasty dads who yeah. open for us. Listen, this, we're just a big group of nasty dads Jesus, traveling the country sucks. in a band. This is, I thought that me breaking both my arms before the show started was a bad energy. This is making it actually I love way this worse. Energy. Get comfortable here in the kingdom of the profane where we reign supreme. Y'all about to get slimed. It's going to be... We're going to say nasty words. All right, let's fucking do the show. I'm tired of this. Troubling concepts. Conf confrontational ideas. Mature situations. Adult situations. Cartoon Ooh. violence. Cartoon violence. <laughs> Mild drug use. Um, <laughs> Anyway, it's, Strong an, it's, language. It, it's, a, it's an advice show. I decided to apply for a part-time job. One job that came up was for a paranormal investigation group. I jokingly sent an application and I received a phone call from the group because they want me on the team. <laughs> Here lies the problem. I'm beyond terrified of the dark, even though I'm an adult. Holy shit. This now, question has now taken two turns. Yes. <laughs> it is almost back where it started. I made up uh, an excuse that I wasn't able to go to the interview and they stated that they still really want me on the team. 
and I need to give them a call when I'm available to do the interview. How do I get out of this mess? I don't want to hurt anyone, and I don't want to be haunted, and that's from I Ain't Afraid of No Ghost. Wait. Yes, I am. <laughs> are, you, are you here? Are you here? Are you present? I'm All sorry. All right, thank you. Okay. Let me, let me First just... off, let me say I'm sorry about how dark it is out there. Are you cool? Yeah, it's quite dark. Just uh, look at us. It's bright up here. Imagine being us. I, I would also say two things. Thank you for oh, thank you so much for writing questions. But uh, thing one, you didn't jokingly submit a resume. It takes a lot of work. It yeah. takes a lot of work. You were like, ha ha ha, click. Like you typed out a thing. And secondly, how good is that resume? And what do you have on it that yeah. these paranormal investigators are like? This is everything we've been yeah. looking for. I was yes. a assistant assistant manager at Toys R Us before it shut down. Um, I was a, a safety associate at Best Buy, and also I'm an esper who can see. I would be concerned about any job where the exchange is, hey, we would want you to come for an interview. I'm not going to fucking do that. No, please. <laughs> we really need people. By which I mean bodies, by which I mean vessels. Did I say vessels? Oops. Damn. Um... Have you thought, okay, here's what you do. Okay. You go to the interview. I want pins and needles. And you say, okay, here's the only thing. I kind of focus on day ghosts. Okay. <laughs> and then if they're like, what, day ghosts? Then you say, what, you think ghosts only come out at night? That's ridiculous. And racist. Yeah. I catch, when the Ghostbusters catch their nighttime ghosts and they bring them home, and then those ghosts escape from captivity while they're on the road and have nowhere to haunt. Sun mm -hmm. comes up, what are they going to do? Call a fucking Uber? No. No. They're still just, ghosts are always there. Where do they go during the day, ghost Thank hunters? You. Yes, someone's saying it. Yes. <laughs> this isn't a joke. This is, a re this is my thesis. Yeah. <laughs> um, to, I, I think that there's a pretty easy solution is you go in, you do the interview, crush it. Of course, you're already halfway in. You're the door. in. You're in. Once someone says we really need you, they can't play hardball with you. So you go, you do the interview, and as you're standing up and you're about to sign the huge novelty signing bonus they have for you, huge novelty check, you say, "I just want one more thing. I am a ghost." <laughs> and then see how they handle that, because yeah. they can't prove you're not, right? Can't prove a negative. Can't prove a negative. Can't prove you're not a ghost. And they can't say, like, there's no such thing as ghost. Oh, fuck. Oh, God. no. Damn it. <laughs> you are going to need to phase through the door instead of opening it. That will be... And I have a WikiHow article for you that's really going to help you out with that. He was paid $17 to write it, and it was worth every penny. Uh, do you all want a Yahoo Ooh. from the Yahoo Answer Service? Yeah. Uh, I have one here that was sent in by uh, Emma Kant. Thank you, Emma. It's Yahoo. Oh, they're an anonymous Yahoo Answers user. Uh, I'm going to call them uh, Pillup, which is like Philip without oh, the H. Oh, fun. I've missed a button. I'm going to remedy that very quickly. Oh, no, no, no. What I tell you, sexy. No, 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 no. Yikes. We got to get raunchy. No, Jesus. Okay, so... <laughs> That's a no. That's going to be a no from me. All right. Uh, Pillip asks, how to surprise someone with a horse? What's, what's the best way to surprise someone with a horse, and what's the best time to do it? After dinner or early in the morning? Why are those the only two options? Yeah. Uh, this doesn't seem relevant, but BTW, we don't have a barn and aren't going to keep our horse at our house. This huh. is just sort of a woods, be... a woods horse that comes <laughs> back and it knows it's needed. It's that, like, is, that is like if I surprised my child with a bike and said, now I'm going to put this bike inconveniently away. Yeah. This it's, bike will actually be across town. This one's going to be in the basement at church. <laughs> it is, it's kind of like speed. Once you get the horse, you can't stop with it anywhere. You yeah, have yeah. nowhere to stop with a horse. You have to keep moving. Okay. It's, it's like a chocobo. It'll run away as soon as you get off of it. Here's so, before breakfast or after dinner and no time in between. Do yeah. It, yeah, do it after dinner. Here's what I would do. Invite the person to a fancy dinner. Make sure your table is near. Wait, hold on. What did you think he was going to say, people who groaned in the audience? Sorry. <laughs> Invite the person to a fancy dinner. Make sure your table is near a giant plate glass window. 
after the desserts have been served, or maybe perhaps uh, it's an ice cream or a creme, that's a kind of dessert, yeah, sure. Uh, creme, creme, creme brulee, still whatever. a dessert, yeah. Uh, the all of a sudden the plate glass window psh, fucking shatters, and you come riding a horse. Woo! You shatter right there. <laughs> This is yours. And it's bleeding to death. It's bleeding to death. <laughs> so dead. Make your peace. <laughs> enjoy it. Quick. Enjoy it. Quick. Surprise. Quick. Dang. Get a picture. Fuck. Get a picture. Quick. No, not there. Ugh. Gross. No, too much blood. <laughs> hey, that's a good one. Speaking of, put a horse head in their bed. And then when they wake up, when they wake that's up. That's a great surprise. When they wake up screaming, you'd be like, nah, psych. The rest of it's right there. And then you just pick up the horse head and just right back onto the horse's body. It's like, it's fine. It's young. It's a young horse. It's going to be fine. And it it regrows, and it's fine. You could also, if you're still at the restaurant, you could have your server come by with, like, I don't know, a big cupcake. And you're like, here's a special cupcake for your birthday. And they're like, it's not my birthday. And you're like, just please, please start opening. Time is of the essence. You must start opening the cupcake right now. Horse is inside. Oh, it's a big cupcake, eh? Oh, yeah. uh, maybe put a horse at the bottom of a glass of champagne. Yes. But I just love it. What's it? Oh, Rodney. And then it's like a very sweet moment. You put the horse in like a big, big jewelry, like claptrap box, and when they reach in to get the horse, you fucking slam it down on their hand. <laughs> also slamming it on the horse, killing it instantly. It's, again, this is, there's very few survivable options for the horse. The horse isn't making it, folks. Yeah. Don't make your horse part of a surprise. I have another question. Read on me, peace, boys. It's still, I'm still, it still feels like we're riddle beta, me peace. we're beta testing riddle me piss. Riddle me peace, boys. All right. These, one of these riddles was submitted by Matthew. The other one, I lost the name. How mysterious. <laughs> oh, two riddles. Good. Double the length. I do have two riddles. The first one goes a little something like this. What's clear to the eyes, made by your imagination, weary, 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 by hurt feelings, escapes only by death. I literally, this frequency you're using. It makes it impossible to remember the last my, to It's the shutting eyes. down my brain. Like, my okay. brain is like, don't what's, hear this. Okay. What's clear to the eyes. Yes. Thank you. Made by your imagination. Okay. <laughs> weary by hurt feelings. Okay. Escapes. Weary, wait, wait, stop. Weary by hurt that's, feelings? That's the okay. wording. That's not a coherent thought. <laughs> Escapes only by death. Can I, I want to, I, you know what sucks about this segment is that I try to guess what the correct answer is that the riddles.com user said. So I'll say some like wild shit thinking it's right and it's even wronger. And what's that say about me? Right. I'm going to say life. Close. Very close. Dreams. Okay. Very close. I want, <laughs> I want to remind you of my favorite part of the riddle uh, connected to the answer, and that is made by your imagination. Yeah. The answer is your soul. Damn. Escapes only by death. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye, fucker. Uh, this. Okay. The second one. Just. It's. You're not even gonna let that one dink no, around I, a little bit in the noodle. I love this one so much. It has the best beginning to a riddle me piss ever. Okay. And I'm actually going to say it in the voice because the. Oh, I love it so much. It goes like this. I am something. Oh, good. <laughs> I kiss my mama before I die. <laughs> what am I? Okay, right. That's it? Once again, the clues you get are, I am something. Right. I kiss my mama before I die. What am I? <laughs> So there's just the two clues. I am something. Uh-huh. I kiss my mama before I die. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Don't kiss mama before you die from the train. <laughs> um, a 
Ba- these I hate this. It's, <laughs> it is anti joke. Like it yeah. is the if the other things that we do are like comedy prompts, this is a, a comedy uh, sandbag that you drop from the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. and poison our show. I know what it is. I of know course you, you know. fucking do. I kiss my mama before I die. Uh, a babe, a baby. I know. I don't. Challenging. Obviously. The answer is a matchstick. Oh, yeah. This is actually good. Yeah, this is here's a riddle. Why. It scratches the box, which is like it came out of its mommy and it touches it. And also, it is something. <laughs> <laughs> and you know how whenever you take a matchstick out of a box, you're like, time to leave your mommy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But first, <laughs> you know how after you use a match, you say, oh, that match, it's dead now. <laughs> yeah. That's after a dead... it kissed its mommy, it kissed the its... box. What a wild thing if you throw a match down. Like, what happened with that? Like, well, it kissed its mommy, and now it's dead. Excuse me? The I match? Know, I know sometimes when I'm setting up a candlelit romantic dinner at home, I'll be like, mm, you like this? You want some music? Okay. Beep, boop, boop. Yeah. Uh, just give me one second. Kiss your mommy! <laughs> Let's go. <sighs> Let's get that question going. Yeah, then. anything. Anything. I'd rather read my own obituary. <laughs> <laughs> I moved, <laughs> I, I moved back in with my parents after graduating from college, and I'm finishing unpacking. Problem is, I have a bunch of anime posters, and I'm not sure if I should put them up on my walls. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, that one was so easy. No. No. Put up posters of other things. What about cool cars or babes or sports heroes? <laughs> Put up posters of other stuff, not this. <laughs> I enjoy these posters, okay? But I'm worried my family will view me as immature. Yep, if I put them up. It's bad enough I didn't have a job right out of school and I had to move back in here. Should I go ahead and put these away or follow my bliss? I, that's from Poster or Fiend in Philly. You should not, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it, this is risky to ask now, but are you here? Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. No, I get it. I stop, get it. Stop, stop. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, it's two-thirds just dunked. I'm going to say, you should stand your bliss. This is beautiful. Now are you here? No. Okay, fine. Okay. What about a poster of Scarface? <laughs> that's, now, that's a bad poster. A lot of poster. people have that. It's like a cool poster. <laughs> yeah. It's like the world is yours and it says it on there and people yeah. come over and be yeah. like, this is Tommy Montana. I haven't seen the movie. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this poster is a reminder for me to see the movie Scarface. <laughs> I wrote on the wall above it, to do, to and do. then I put a colon, and then I put the poster from Scarface. Scarface and I didn't something. frame it or anything. I just kind of duct taped it up there. I'll just, I know two things. It's Big Gun, and he, this dude loves confectioner sugar, I think. <laughs> yeah. He, he eats piles of it. Um, yeah. I, say, I say you put the anime posters up, and then when your parents come in the room, you're wearing, like, a really cool smoking jacket, yes. and maybe you have, like, a cool mustache and a pipe, and you explain to them the artistic value. Yes, sure. And then if they're like, that seems immature, then you say, you don't get it, and then blow smoke directly in right their face. Right in their yes. face. It's time for you to elevate anime. Maybe a nice frame is so important and some downlighting. Oh, yes. Some museum quality frame. Maybe like a stanchion with a velvet rope. Museum quality framing is huge. Yes. Because that is art. That elevates anime to art. Yes. And I think that that would be... Jesus, put, put put a little stuff up here. Put a little plate next to it that says like, you know, printing on paper with the artist's name and maybe yeah. the piece title and the year that it came out, and then just stand in front of it going, Can mm. you two not name any anime <laughs> other uh, than Dragon Ball Z? Yuri on Ice. That doesn't count. I know Can it you because name you any anime about. I've not joked about on a stage with you before? Gun- Gundam. <laughs> All right. Attack on Titan? Okay, Paul was talking about that backstage. Also doesn't count. Wait, hold on. Battle Angel Alita. <laughs> There's one where a little kid's a detective. That's the Adventure Zone. <laughs> that doesn't count. Okay. Let me say this. Let me say this. I'm all for this, right? But that's a lot of posters. And you can put up too many posters. You can do poster overkill. 
but you can repurpose them. I know sometimes on Queer Eye, they're like, I don't want to throw out my dad's old clothes. And then they come back and Bobby's like, I made it into a quilt. And then they have to be like, oh, good. Because <laughs> I, I for sure didn't like them in clothes form, Bobby. That's not overstepping at all, pal. Anyway, make a quilt out of your anime posters. <laughs> Make a quilt out of your dad's anime posters. Yeah. I, I, um, I want to say I love anime. I think it's a beautiful art form. I'm just trying to get myself an excuse to quit Twitter. And I feel like I'm nudging my way You're there. You're getting closer, man. Make uh, it toxic uh, enough. Hey, let's just swing right onto this good vine. Uh, Emma Kant also sent this one, and it's from Yahoo Answers user We who asks, How do I buy an anime body pillow without my parents knowing? <laughs> This is great. This is almost the inverse of the last question. Mm -hmm. I want one, but I don't know how to get one without my parents knowing. And how can I get it without my parents knowing? (laughs) Mm, Okay. Here's my pit. That is the hardest thing to pretend it's something other than what it is. It's so... It's so of itself right. yes. that if you were seen carrying it, you and then would say, "What is it?" and you had to say what it was. Luggage. De- de- <laughs> it's a f- dead friend. Like oh, there's nothing. It's a memorial. It's yeah. a memorial. Here, here's what you do: you go to your parents, you say, "Listen, I've been doing some research. I went on ConsumerReports.com or whatever, and I was looking for the best pillowcase, and it turns out it's this one, having nothing to do with the I anime do babe. Not carry about has nothing to do with it." It is just hypoallergenic and top quality material. The thread count is Oh, off the wild. charts. Right. It's just one big thread, and apparently <laughs> and that's it, what we've been looking for. It hides stains like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> and that's... <laughs> oh, we're getting the light. That's our time. Thanks, Thanks folks. folks. No, I love anime. Okay, how can we get an anime body pillow in this fucking house without their parents knowing. Okay. Sarcophagus. <laughs> now we're talking. Now we're cooking with gas. Sarcophagus. How, what? Like a shroud of Turin kind of thing? What are you talking about? No, you idiot. That's a wrap. I'm talking about a beautiful museum quality sarcophagus. If you can find an anime body pill on Amazon, you should be able to find a sarcophagus to fit it. That's what I'm saying, Jeff. Bezos. Yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> You could always say it was a shipping mistake from the Amazon factory. Yes. I was trying to get one of a cool car. Maybe the car from Cars that the Wilson brother plays. I can't remember which one does it. And it's, a, Dad, it was supposed to be the car car. And believe me, I've been on the phone with Amazon every freaking day trying to take care of this. And as soon as I can get it corrected, they are going to ship me out a beautiful Owen Wilson yeah. What was the yeah. car car Owen. called? Can you get an Owen Wilson pillow? Lightning McQueen. They're, they're going to replace it with an Owen. I'm pissed off too, Dad. It was supposed to be Owen Wilson. <laughs> Would you I'm love? the one who has to sleep with it. Yeah. Oh, fuck, fuck dude. Hey, if you had to get an Owen Wilson body <laughs> pillow, uh-huh. yep. would you get Owen Wilson from Royal Tenenbaums no. or Owen Wilson from... Um, the holy shit! No, let him bomb. Let him bomb. Hold on, hold on. Owen Wilson from Royal Tannen Bombs. Yeah. Or, thank you, Drill Bit Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one and only time I will accept audience participation when it's trying to help me remember the name of the film, Drill Bit Taylor. But let thank it, you, my friend. But let it be law from now on because I don't want this to be a bad habit established in this or any other audience. If we ever ask for a question, if we ever ask for advice, if it's we don't know a rule for Dungeons and Dragons, we can't remember some arcane name of something, just yell Drill Bit Taylor <laughs> every time. Right. That will always spice things up. I think I would take the Drill Bit Taylor pillow. Yes. Because it would be uh, far more inexplicable. Yes. <laughs> if anybody saw it, there is no justification. I could just be like, I don't know either. Griffin, what, which uh, Owen Wilson pillow would you uh, take? Oh, yeah. Mine would be Dupree, and I could act pissed off every time I came in my bedroom. Like, this fucking guy's still here? <laughs> <laughs> Justin? Marmaduke. Fuck, that wasn't an option. Got to think outside the box. Uh, I decided to apply for a part-time job. One job that came... Oh, I got nope. that one. I work children's birthday parties... No, let's take another pass. I think we could... One more again. I work children's birthday parties at a local family fun center, as it is known. A big part of my job is doing magic tricks for the kids. Here's my issue. I absolutely suck at doing magic tricks. I've been doing working this job for almost two years, and my boss thinks I'm great at it. 
I managed to convince her I'm really good by pure luck. Every time I do a party, though, the kids are unimpressed and often see right through my tricks. They'll literally shout out how I'm doing the trick. It's frustrating and embarrassing. What do I do? And that's from Mediocre Magician in Cleveland. Are you, are you here? All right. Whoa, a thousand doves just flew onto the stage. Whoa. Whoa. Thank you. They're all on fire. Oh, shit. I cannot think of anything more demoralizing than having an eight-year-old just yell out like, the ball's under your armpit, dumbass. <laughs> I mean, okay. Maybe try theming it for something the kids like, like Fortnite. <laughs> just like, I, you put a, instead of a bunny rabbit, you just rename it their favorite Fortnite stars. <laughs> <laughs> or you literally reach it, what's inside the hat? And then it's your phone, and you're like, your favorite guys to streaming. Just watch this for Just 20 minutes. Just watch this. I'm going to sit in silence and smoke cigarettes <laughs> while you kids enjoy this Fortnite video. <laughs> um, Maybe work on your patter. Yes. And make it less of a... You know, there are a lot of, like, uh, comedian magicians out there where the, the tricks are either, like, really basic or sometimes even really bad, but then it's actually about, like, the comedy they do. Yeah. You could do that and just, like, full-on dunk on the birthday Just kid. roast on the birthday boy, yeah. But, like, here's two rings. Whoops. Anyways, fuck you, Josh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, what's... I mean, probably more subtle than that. Yeah. <laughs> What's I, in, I'm not you. What's in the hat? Let's see. It's for you, Josh. Huff my shorts. If you're listening to this later, Griffin just did a flip off. It was rad. Oh, look um, at this. I got two hats. Josh. It's two. These are yours. two flip offs. Um, are you... Hold on. I'm running some mental calculations. Okay. Are you prepared currently to do any visual magic right now? Oh, my God. Be quiet. I can't hear them. I can't hear them agonizing over this question. Are you prepared to let us judge your magical prowess okay, right now? this is not acceptable. Are you prepared to let us support your magical support prowess your magical right prowess right now? If not, just say no real loud. Does anyone have a deck of cards? If anyone says yes, they're a plant. No, shh. Everyone be quiet. Do you have a deck of cards? Listen, we've never had magic in a show before. One magic trick is not gonna kill us. Okay. I guess we have magic. Come on down, I guess. Come on down, let's get that come deck on of down cards and up let's here. Let's pass that deck of cards forward. Let's get that I deck of cards up here, you'll never get it back. <laughs> I don't know how you get up to the stage, Paul. I don't you know? either. Can we get a little oh, bit hello, of hello, hello, hello. Welcome, hello, come Hi. to this microphone. Hello. Adonis. God, we've never had magic, I'm so excited. And At this point in the show, Adonis does a badass magic trick, but their microphone wasn't working, so it's just like three minutes of us going, whoa, no way. So now, we take you to the end of Adonis's magic trick. All right, bye Adonis, thank bye, you, thank you're great. You. You're a great magician. That was incredible. That was amazing. See, that's much, that's like I keep telling you guys, that's much better than jokes. Um, I mean. I just want to know how they cheated. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, I know how they did it. <laughs> <laughs> the worst. You're hey, the I worst. got a Yahoo. Okay, perfect. Cool. Uh, this one's from Adrian Cowles. Thank you, Adrian. It's, uh. It's an anonymous Yahoo Answers user. I'm going to call uh, Adonis asks. Should scientists give octopi bones? <laughs> and a, a lot of other to, podcasts... To play with? A lot of other podcasts would turn and just run away from a question like that. Five words, each one so vitally essential. Should scientists give octopi bones? I will say that the word that most troubles me in there, and if I have to pick one, is give. Because that makes it sound like you would hand the octopi bones and they would just absorb them in. 
Ah, oh, thank you. Finally, someone gave us bones. Travis, it's up to the scientists to figure out how to give the bones to the octopi. I think the problem would be... That's why they're scientists. If, if you did this, I think that the, it would be really hard for the octopus to walk because its legs would now just be locked in a straight position, and it'd be like, tick, 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 it's like a tripod. More, it doesn't have to be one bone per leg, Travis. <laughs> Your imagination has failed You make us me again. so fucking mad sometimes. I mean, again with this shit. Even if it's every two bones, show. if you give it like a, like a human, and it's two bones with knees, two bones that's still gonna be every hard human. to walk. I think that it would be a lot of bones in each How one. How many? Eight. <laughs> <laughs> so it would have seven knees? No, not every joint's a knee, you dullard. So it would have knuckles. Oh, wait. Knuckles. Hold on. Knuckles. Are the legs the fingers? There's yes. 50 bones in one big skull. And think about that last one for a second, because that's the most fucked up bone of all. The last thing. Yeah. What if they give him the skull of a... No, that's just attractive Squidward. Never mind. <laughs> Listen. My fear is this. We give the octopi bones. We're loving it. We, loving we it. don't. I don't know how to. <laughs> the scientists are going to do this. Do. Scientists give them bones. At first, they're not crazy about it, right? They don't love it. Their pants don't fit. They, they hate it. They can't squish through little holes they anymore. They can't squish through little holes oh, anymore. Oh, no, my door's only this big. Can't yeah. get in my ding-dang house. Now they're mad at us, but they do have bones. Oh, no. My fear is this. You give an octopi bones. And, <laughs> and they want a glass of milk. Eventually, they're going <laughs> to... Eventually, they're going to look up from the beautiful, briny, shimmery, shiny sea. Yeah. They're going to look up on land, and they're going to say, Gerald, I'm going up to take what's theirs. Mm -hmm. That's the big mistake you make with octopi is you give them bones, and they're going to come on land and want our shit. Yeah. That's, That's what happened huge... in Finding Dory. And I know what you're saying. They can't breathe. Well, we gave them bones. Like lung bones. <laughs> why, why, no, why stop there? Let's give oh, them gills and get them up here. Let's give them gills, and then let's give them skin, and then let's give them emotions, and then and let's, let's give let them, them a car, let a them, loan. Let them have sex, and then it'll be bicentennial octopus. Yes. <laughs> let's give them bones. Let's give them gills. Let's give them training and coding. My and get... bicentennial man joke didn't go very good. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody o liked it. Octotennial man. <laughs> No, uh, no. Let me ask nothing. you that. I think that this, listen, science has come a long way. We know that. We've maybe been to the moon. Mm, you know what I mean? Don't do Wink. this. We've done a lot of stuff. Where's the pelvis going, an octopus? They don't have to have all the bones. They just have if to wait, have. Wait, where would you stop? You That's give them a spine, you give them a skull, you give them some legs, you give them a pelvis, maybe some ribs. Now they're a person. Now let me, let me ask you this. Does the octopus wear pants with four legs or eight, or is it four legs and a shirt with four sleeves? I would actually think uh, two, two sleeves, two pants legs, and then just when they lift their shirt up, just four arms. <laughs> ah, nice. Ah! Yeah, nice. It's fun at parties. Why would they wear clothes? They're an octopus. Oh, well. Because they've joined the fraternity of bones. <laughs> You've got to wear clothes if Everybody you got bones. Everybody with any animal that has here. bones wears clothes. At least that's my platform for 2020. If everybody else can run, I can fucking run with, if you got bones, you need clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm polling at 2%. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Ribbon has... The biggest donations of all time? Ah! I've never used this in self-defense before, but dun 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 here I am. Da -da -ba -ba -ba. Rock you like the Munch Squad. I want a Munch. This is the Munch Squad. It's a podcast within a podcast, and it's waning years. Still, still the twi Hold on, I need a little sip of my cab before we move on. Wet the comedy whistle. Um, this and thank you, Bookhouse Brewing. 
Um, this. Okay, Paul's just gonna keep. Okay. Uh, I'll just keep doing my jokes. Thanks, Paul. This outrageously. Oh, you don't have to do that. Hey, you guys did really good. Yeah, in y'all the crushed it. Paul and Storm yeah. did so good. Do you guys want to come back out and finish the show? Okay. All right. This outrageously kinky ice cream store is coming to Victoria in July. Wow, I don't like any of that. (laughs) None of it's good. None of it's good. This is from Kat. Thank you, Kat, for sending in this outrageously kinky ice cream store coming to Victoria in July. I've been on the internet a while. It's going to take something pretty wild for me to qualify it as outrageously. We used, to, we used to advertise for a sex toy company for many years. Yeah. So. This is the, the extreme. Side note, this is a fun life hack. I still follow them on Twitter, so sometimes I'll be scrolling like, oh, bad news, bad news. Oh, cage for a boner. Uh-oh. I'm what? just saying, if this ice cream's not going inside me, not mouth-wise. <laughs> Warning, this store is not suitable for children. And adults who aren't down to get dirty. It says that! Stop looking at my jokes. Victorians will finally... That's what they call themselves in Victoria. Okay. It would be C. Victorians will finally be able to get a taste of provocative Vancouver-based ice cream store, Perverted Ice Cream, by July 2019. Store owner Suzanne... Sir Watuck confirmed to Victoria Buzz they will be opening up a new location at 604. It doesn't matter. All the flavors featured in the Vancouver shop ranging from classic and premium perverted to royally perverted. <laughs> sure. We'll be what could that be? Very, very perverted. <laughs> Delivering this this the- ice cream will go down on you in a theater. <laughs> 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 Delivering... <laughs> Delivering on the owner's promise to serve delicious ice cream with a twist. And that twist, it's jizz. <laughs> it's not. It's not jizz. I told you this would be a dirty one. I what? just think maybe that was a family miscommunication where, like, the grandpa was like, let's open an ice cream store with a twist. And he meant, like, two flavors twisted together. And his pervert son was like, oh, I know exactly oh, yeah. what you mean. Twist and dicks, right? I love it. Whoa, no. Whoa. We just wanted something that was unlike any other ice cream shop out there. Mission accomplished. Perverted is a beautiful word that can mean so much. A sexual meaning is just a tiny bit of that. Oh, Oh, so your ice cream is the different kind of perverted. (laughs) Yeah. Got it. Hey, everybody. I'm a pervert. That means I like uh, listening to music. (laughs) (laughs) Because it has lots of meanings. (laughs) We're not here to kink shame at all. But also, you can't say that the sexual meaning of perverted is just a tiny bit of it, when I would argue it's a good 85%. Yeah, Yeah. it's a, a, yeah, this, this one ice cream they have a picture of, um, actually, is a big ice cream uh, in a uh, and with chocolate on it, and it's got a condom shoved into it. Not a joke. Oh, yep. Uh huh. Yeah. So that wow, you are what? definitely going for the sex one on that. Yeah. The perverted is definitely the sex one. Y'all, 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 y'all. News update: the condoms in a wrapper. Yes, thank you. Ex- <laughs> Explore the seductive side of some of your favorite sweet treats, some of which are served with a condom as one of the toppings. No glove, no love, right? Wrong. I mean, yeah, but... Incorrect. You've used it incorrectly. It's not supposed to refer to a condom shoved into an ice cream treat. No condom, no ice cream is nothing. That's nothing. (laughs) Besides being finger-licking delicious pass, hard pass, (laughs) hard pass... I have never had a press release make me want to wash my hands before. Besides being finger only delicious, this ice cream shop works with a local company that supplies the sugar and other simple base ingredients that staff mix in the store every day with fresh, local, high-fat milk. Oh, sorry, we, that was from a different place. No, this is this, this place. It's perverted, but, like, don't get it twisted. It's still great at it. Shop eight- local, think super horny all the time. They're also known for avoiding fillers. <laughs> for, for what? And chemicals, as much as possible, to create the closest possible natural soft serve. Is that sexy? I literally don't know anymore. I'm, I'm afraid of the caveat as much as possible. We avoid chemicals. Oh, no, some got in. Well, 
We do our best. Their cool, quirky ice cream flavors aren't the only things that'll make you scream this summer. Pop some of their... Um, no! Pop some of their uh, signature salty balls in your mouth for a delicious surprise. Don't, don't all, gratify that. No. Don't worry. We're only talking about their soft caramel-covered chocolate balls with mold and sea salt. Good job. You made it half a fucking paragraph being cool. Yeah. <laughs> and you had to be boring. What if they were oh, like, don't get it twisted. We're not going to put testicles in your mouth. No fucking duh, ice no cream duh. company. Oh, I thought you meant you were going to place some real human testicles in my mouth. <laughs> oh, thank you for Claire. I was aghast. I'd made it this far in the advertisement, but I was confused by that because I didn't want strangers' human testicles in my mouth. But now you've clarified to me that perhaps you meant a confectionery t- treat. Oh, thank you so much, ice cream store. Fuck you. Perverted, perverted ice cream also sells T-shirts, sweatpants, candles... Lip balms, baseball hats, and of course, perverted condoms. So you can rep this new favorite in style. Imagine that scenario. Hey, cool condom. What's it from? <laughs> oh, thank it's, you my, for uh, it's from my favorite ice cream that I like. <laughs> and, they, and you got the condom to keep us from having a child or an STD uh, at the ice cream store. <laughs> so let me get it fucking straight. You pulled the condom to protect us sexually from the ice cream that you ate earlier. Good. I'm going home. Goodbye. Wait, wait. Don't leave. Don't leave. It's a perverted condom. Yeah, I'm actually out. Oh, no. I'm actually done. Who would say, who wants to say that? Let me put on my perverted condom. <laughs> Anyway, that's perverted ice cream. Come to Victoria in July. If you're in the area, check it out. Or it, don't. Don't. Or do. Or do. I, I do want to know what the flavor is. Hey, everybody. This is Griffin. Uh, flying, flying solo. Got my pilot's license. So you're on board my plane of advertising, money zone stuff. And uh, I'm going to take good care of you. If you look out to the right, you'll see the Blue Ridge Mountains. I want to tell you first of all about Casper. Casper is not a scary ghost and not uh, a, scary, a scary monster of any kind. It's not a Frankenstein. It's a bed. Uh, specifically, the mattress part of the bread. The bread. <laughs> okay, cut that. Make sure you cut that one, Terry. They make beds, but mattresses. They've got these new hybrid mattresses that combine the pressure relief of their award-winning foam with durable yet gentle springs. Uh, We all have Casper mattresses. Some of us, I think, more than one. I've got one up in my guest bedroom whenever we have folks over to take a slumber or take it to slumber town and snooze the day away. Uh, Then we always get compliments. They said... Uh, wow, that must that must be a million dollar mattress. And then we say uh, we're not supposed to say the price of the mattress in this advertisement, but it's super affordable and uh, it's got luxurious comfort and resilience. We say all of this to them. Uh, they've got the the hybrid collection with lift support, increased airflow for cooling, durability for all body types, and enhanced edge support. Uh, and they also have that 100 night risk free sleep on it trial. So get one. I'm still saying all of this to my friends. Get $100 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash brother and using brother at checkout. That's casper.com slash brother and using brother at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. And then uh, that's all I say to my friends, and they leave. We're also sponsored in part this week by MeUndies. MeUndies is a really slick place that is here to change your underwear, uh, but not actually, like, even though, even if you have made a mess down there, they're not, that's not what they do. They supply you with new underwear. Uh, They believe that undies should be soft, fit every booty, and offer fun patterns that give you the freedom to express yourself. Uh, I have replaced my entire underwear collection at this point with MeUndies. It uh, has changed my life. I'm wearing them right now. Everything feels so nice. Uh, makes my butt look like a fun fiesta because of all the fun prints that they have on it. And uh, they also just introduced the Feel Free collection for women. Miandi size tested these five new silhouettes on every body type with an ultra soft feather light waistband that provides zero restriction. These undies are dedicated to being the best thing that has ever been on your body. 
in sizes extra small up to 4XL. And as always, they have new prints that drop every Tuesday. Uh, I love them. Love them. Love the, love the underwear. Love the lounge pants. Love the onesie comfort suits. It's all so good. And right now they have an offer for our listeners. For any first-time purchasers, you can get 15% off and free shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee uh, by going to uh, meundies.com slash mybrother. That's 15% off your first pair, free shipping, and a 100% sat- satisfaction guarantee by going to meundies.com slash mybrother. That's meundies.com slash mybrother. Uh, that is it for the Jumbotrons. Thank you all so much for everybody that came out to Cleveland. I feel like we were kind of bratty about ticket sales for Cleveland, uh, but y'all showed up in a big way, and it was a real fun show. That's what you're hearing right now. Uh, we are super, super slammed this week, uh, and last week all the, the rest of the fam was out on a beach vacation, so uh, this, is, this is us filling in. But uh, we should be back next week with a new installment in the McElroy Adventures, in the McElroy Trials. Uh, and you're going to hear that, and you're going to be razzled and dazzled. Go check out all our new merch. We got backpacks. We got fanny packs now covered in sort of McElroy brand iconography. Uh, we got new pins. We got new kinds of everything all at McElroy.family. Uh, we still got some live shows coming up, but I think they may all be sold out, but you can also check on that at McElroy.family. And, uh, yeah, I think everything else we do at the end of the show, so I'm going to let you get back to it. Bye. Have you ever watched a movie so bad you just needed to talk to somebody about it? Well, here at the Flop House, we watch a bad movie and then talk about it. Yeah, you don't have to do anything. We'll watch it and we'll talk it. We do the hard work. Featuring the beautiful vocal talents of Dan McCoy. Stuart Wellington. And me, America's Rascal, Elliot Kalin. New episodes every other Saturday at MaximumFun.org or wherever you get your podcast, dude. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello, what's your name? Hi, uh, my name is uh, Morgan. Hi, Morgan. Oh, That's quite an instrument you got there, Morgan. I love oh, it. Why, thank you. I appreciate it. So um, my, uh, my uh, seeking um, for advice comes from a uh, recent promotion that I got at work, okay. which uh, requires me to uh, talk to a lot of executives at a corporate office and kind of make relationships with them. So oh. you know, they, they encourage Ooh. you to uh, share some of your like, hobbies and everything like that. We get it. My biggest Wink. hobby is, is yucky ice cream from a sexual. <laughs> no, I don't want to go there ever. No, thank you. Um, Coward. <laughs> yep. Put our ice cream in you. <laughs> uh, my biggest hobby is Magic the Gathering. Yes. Oh. Which, uh, <laughs> Very cool. I'm you all... among my friends and, and family, clearly, but uh, I don't know if I want to tell a 50 year old man that I play a card game for 13 and up at uh, the age of sure. so. Most games are for 13 and up. Don't yeah. worry about that. True, true. I um, don't know of a board game that says, like, for 50 years old and older. Uh, not a board game, but golf? <laughs> golf, yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure they so let you kids just play came golf. Up, so you love Magic the Gathering and you came up to drag golf? Is that yeah. what we're doing? Okay, uh, good. Oh, 100%. Okay, good, good, good. It might not be Magic the Gathering that's the only thing keeping you separate from 50-year-olds. It <laughs> okay. might also be your this junker. Okay. Um, but my question is, uh, how do I uh, make that sound cool? <laughs> My passion is cards. Ooh. Do you play? Do you play cards? Uh, I've been known to get down to Vegas from time to time. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> would you say that this is the end of our conversation? Yeah, I would. Excellent. <laughs> this has gone oh, yeah, very well. Here's a great option. Lie. You could lie. What are you into? I love football. Well, I also love football. No, Excellent. No, 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 no. Who's your team? The... Plain, the Plane Walkers? Is that a... No, here, here's the thing. Real world... Real, real, the, the thing is, is like a lot of people have... Um, hobbies that when they first started out like hundreds of years ago or whatever were also weird and the key is now when you say it like I play Magic the Gathering don't explain it they don't if they said like I love to play golf they wouldn't sit there like but uh, golf's fun it's cool you know like they wouldn't explain that's it that's a dumb thing to say though because everybody knows what golf is yeah <laughs> I mean, that's a, that would be ridiculous imagine that fucking thing you just said with your own mouth here on stage yeah. like I play golf it's um have you ever seen a very small white ball <laughs> yeah but that's what I'm saying. If you say, like, I play the Mag- Magic the Gathering for fun, and they're like, what's that? I'm like, oh, you don't know. Um, and then with that tiny phrase, oh, you don't know, you've just gained dominance in this situation, oh, my friend. Yeah. Sure. Oh, you don't know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and then you explain it to them. Well, I got a starter deck for you to borrow. Let's just, uh, let's just throw it down right now and see what Now you bam. got him. 
And then if they beat you, they're a natural, and you yeah. take them on tour, and you milk them for every yeah, penny that's your Robbie worth. Fisher right there. Yeah. Uh, you could say, oh, well, uh, I play Yu-Gi-Oh! And they're like, what? And you're like, just kidding, I play Magic. And they're like, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we had a nerd on our oh, hands. shit. Woo! Scared me. Um, could you and then you play your trap card, and a dragon eats him or something. Can you travel around with a starter deck and say, I play Magic the Gathering, and now so do you, and hand him the deck, and, and, see, and say, like, if you really care about getting to know me, you'll learn to play this card game. <laughs> and Anyways, play- I don't know what you do, but do you want to buy a car or whatever? I don't know what your job is. Do you have any expensive cards, any of those fancy ones? Ooh. Uh, I have a few. No, nothing like in the you know, $1,000 range or anything like that. But. Get some of those. <laughs> step one. That's step one is you need to get a lot of those. Until you're very wealthy with card money, I guess. And then you just show, I uh, well, you play Magic the Gathering. Oh, that's, uh, that's the nerd shit, right? You're like, mm, I guess, you tell me. And you fan yourself with a bunch of cards. And then your boss is going to be like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> anyway, these, are, these are very valuable. And these they are, always will be. I have a printout of how these are good. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> these are worth $560. Oh, cool. <laughs> Good. <laughs> That's good for you. Does that help? Uh, yeah, my wife usually just tells people I'm a magician, though. So. There you uh, go. Okay. It's not Perfect. wrong, yeah. Thank you. I love it. Hello. Hello. Hi, what is your name? Uh, my name is Billy. Hi, Hi Billy. Billy. Hi, Billy. Hi, how are you? Uh, good. I'm you can good. Tell, you can, Thank you. You can adjust that mic if you want. Uh, just point it right up at the... Yeah. Yeah. So I was running a little late. Uh, I had to run a conference call, telling people a lot of boring things. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I got to my house, uh, had maybe five minutes to get ready. Uh, so as I am peeing, you know how you have occasionally have an itch on your head? Okay. Like, yeah, ah. I'm aware. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so as I was itching my head, my glasses midstream fell off. Yeah. yeah. Directly. And you caught them. Oh, yeah, I caught them with the toilet. And you never... <laughs> yeah. And you never once peed on your glasses. Oh, uh, this is the first time I peed on my glasses. Okay, and, and yeah. I don't know about you guys, but the pee breaks did not stop. They just kept going. Wait, 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 wait. I just wait. kept peeing. You just kept peeing on so, your glasses. Sorry, what was your name again? Uh, that, that, my name is Billy. <laughs> Billy? So, Billy, the speed at which you accepted the scenario was zero seconds. <laughs> yes. Um, well... I don't know how far we want to get into this, but not only did we're I... We're pretty far yeah, in, we're, uh, William. We're pretty deep, William. This is pretty standard <laughs> fare so far. Can I say... Is it? it on me. I just... <laughs> <clears throat> I didn't understand what that press release meant when it said that pervert doesn't have to be a sexual word until literally... <laughs> You're welcome. Just now. Yeah. I but, see the light. Thank you, Billy. Um, I am curious. We don't kink shame on the show, but we are allowed to kink question to, yeah. to find out more information. This is not mine. Uh, how, no? how much of a part of you telling a bunch of strangers that you pissed on your glasses is part of the kink? <laughs> <laughs> is this part of it for you, or all is right, this right. just... Billy, I would just throw them in the dishwasher. That would, ah, but then the dishes, plastic. huh? Yeah. What about the plastic? You could boil them. How would you and not- I know what you're saying. That would ruin my glasses. But bad news, Billy, we're past that. <laughs> yeah. We passed that station about 25 miles ago. We passed that when you looked down at your piss-covered glasses and said, that's not a reason to stop. <laughs> How do you stop midstream? Some piss is the same as all piss, I mean, really. It's a fair question. How do you stop midstream? In that... You, you can, can do it. You can say, no, no, no. You're burst I wanna, a kidney or something. It, against you odds. want me to go step by step muscularly? Okay, against stop. the odds, I want to leap to Billy's defense for a second. Okay. No one ever says, I just pissed on my glasses a little bit. <laughs> right? I mean, you pissed on them or you didn't. Are, they, are you wearing them right now? Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> now listen. Now listen. You knew he was. You, you rinsed them. Was. You rinsed them off. You used some sort of cleaning product on them, right? Yeah. Okay. And then you felt, okay, and you put them on? Well, I need them. Okay, right. You need them to see. Uh, I actually think you're in the clear as long as you don't tell anyone. Oh, no! <laughs> Does that help, but Billy? We that were, help? It, it helps. Thank Can you. I ask one, one last question, promise? So I shit on my <laughs> wand. <laughs> no, no, this is nothing that. Can I give you guys pens? No. 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 They don't, have get anywhere, on. don't get they anywhere near us, Billy. 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 
No, Billy. <laughs> Billy, 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 no. It's hey, a hard no, no. Billy, think about this for a second. If anyone for the rest of our life ever tries to hand us anything and we're like, no thanks, and they're like, you took pins from the piss glass guy. <laughs> yeah. They're pretty amazing. Listen, I believe you, and normally we say don't follow our advice, but I'm going to give you one piece of actionable advice. Next time, lead with the pins. <laughs> <laughs> Just put them right there on the edge of the stage, Billy, if that's okay. Thanks, Billy. Thank you. Thank you, Billy. <laughs> Hello. 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 What's How's your name? Going? My name is Heather. Hello, Hi, Heather. Heather. Um, my question uh, is, well, there's a little bit of lead up. My husband loves tourist traps, uh, and I am a vegetarian. So we... <laughs> <laughs> How do you make it work? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a real Dharma and Greg situation. <laughs> They're related, strangely. Okay. Um, so we honeymooned in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Yeah, you yeah, nice. are. Yeah, love <laughs> nice. Gatlinburg. A lot of Beef jerky stores. Okay. And, and my airsoft, pe- uh, airsoft, airsoft gun guns, stores, beef yeah. jerky stores. That fudge and laser tag. That oh, okay. restaurant. Yeah, it's so lit we, down there. We went into no less than three beef jerky stores, and my husband is incapable of not telling the employees that I'm a vegetarian. Okay. Unprompted. Yeah. Have uh, we not gotten vegetarian jerky yet? It seems like we would have gotten there. But yeah, it's, it's called of, kale like, chips. Portobello mushrooms. That's not bad. Uh, that's oh, really? We do not sell it at the beef jerky stores in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Okay. They do sell shirts that say uh, "People Eating Tasty Animals." Okay, Peta, I love yeah. it. That's, oh. that's fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Yeah. So uh, inevitably, the. Uh, employees will then like unload on me so i've had to stop going into beef jerky stores with him because he goes into this fugue state right he can't help himself <laughs> like has and i've asked him like why did you nobody nobody asked like nobody even offered me jerky and he was like i don't know when you say unload <laughs> do you mean like they give you shit Lots of shit. Wow. I don't understand like, okay. you don't, how it's you hurting don't, them, but... They, you they don't like my them. dry animal? <laughs> what? It's dry animal. Oh, but you this is unchewable beef. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like my hard, crispy, tooth-breaking beef? But you... You can eat jerky, right? <laughs> yeah, except jerky, though, right? Jerky's not even like meat. <laughs> it's old. It's just like beef paper. <laughs> Could so how do I get him to stop? Okay. Um, is your husband here? He is. Okay. Hey, cut it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stop hey. it. <laughs> Fucking stop. <laughs> you can get your jerky on Amazon. Stop going into these stores. I think they the- yell at your wife. Now listen. Now, if you want the better question that we can have more fun with. Yeah. <laughs> cover your ears. <laughs> cover. Your- I'm watching you. Cover your ears. Cover them for real. The real question is. How do you get back? (laughs) Uh, And the answer is you take them to Whole Foods. (laughs) And you're like, this one has tasted the flesh of the cow. (laughs) And then someone's going to fucking kill them. So you're going to have to find a new path for yourself. Yeah, now listen. It's going to get real messy after that. You're going to have to change your name. Probably move. Get part a new of, job. It's part identity. of your journey, though. Respect the journey. You got yeah. it. It's part of your journey. And your new identity might eat meat. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be a As whole a cover. Thing. Yeah. They'll never suspect. Uh, if you're going to start, don't start with jerky. Holy shit. No. It makes a bad first meat impression. Some meat is wet, and that's okay. That's a Griffin McElroy guarantee. <laughs> Does that help? Extremely. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? Good. 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 Great. Thank you for asking. So, uh, some kids moved in next door, which is fine, I guess. It's um, not. (laughs) What's your name? Steven, by the way. Steven, hey. So, um, I have like a pretty tall fence, and you can't really see through it for my dog. Um, And I can't normally see the kids, which is a good thing. But then they got a trampoline, and now they keep jumping on it, and they keep staring at me when they jump. (laughs) It's... Yeah, yeah. And it, it looks like Michael Myers is in the George Lopez theme song. Okay. It's, kind of okay. it's a beautiful mental image you've painted for me, Steven. Like, are you asking us to help you sell your house? <laughs> How do I feel peace of mind in my own home? Um, see, I want to I take it. Was it Steven? 
Yes. Okay. Um, I want to take you back to the first thing Stephen said, which was some kids moved in next door, which is amazing. <laughs> this idea that a bunch of blank checks. <laughs> we got a camp nowhere situation. Yeah, we got a real camp nowhere situation. Our hands. A bunch of kids just moved in and bought a house together. I also really like when you said that you had a fence you couldn't see through for your dog, which I imagine your dog just is really private. <laughs> Lights his face. It's oh, the t- no. it's uh it's the Taco Bell dog. We don't want paparazzi. <laughs> oh, um, could you next time they go out to trampoline, you're already on their trampoline. <laughs> wait, wait your turn, idiots. I'm having fun up here. This is how adults do it. And you're smoking. <laughs> we'll never see that coming. And you always put it out on the trampoline. <laughs> and maybe lower your backyard. So no matter how high they get, they yes. still can't cavernous, see. Cavernous, cavernous. Very good. Yeah. Raise your fences. Build an extension on the trampoline side. <laughs> Just right in front of the trampoline. Right he goes up trampoline. another eight feet. Nothing. Whoa! Uh, Maybe steal their trampoline and burn it. No, come on, Travis. That's not good. It's not even a joke. Can you somehow? And I'm I'm not a scientist, so I'll be I'd be putting bones and fish and stuff, but. <laughs> If I was a scientist, I could tell you some way to weaken the springs just to affect the height. Okay. Not enough to hurt the kids. Not enough to hurt the kids, lawyers. But just when they jump on it, it just goes lower and then doesn't raise back up. Whoa. That's a net. <laughs> so you're talking about a huge round hammock. Kids would love that. They'll appreciate it when they're in their 30s and they need a license to chill. That's true. They'll appreciate that giant round <laughs> hammock that Stephen made for them. Stephen, I have one very good piece of advice, but it depends on if you have one particular item. And it may be uncomfortable, uncomfortable for you to tell me whether or not you own this item. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Do you own a Baba Duke costume? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. eBay's Kids. open late. eBay's open late. Kids hate this guy. <laughs> okay? Yeah. I think the problem there is if I jumped and I saw my neighbor, like, my neighbor was Bobby Duke, I'd want to, like, I got to double check this. <laughs> Maybe try. They jump over. They see you. You're just in your backyard doing your taxes really frustrated. And yeah. they're like, oh, I feel weird. They or, go down below the fence and they come back up. You're Bobby Duke. <laughs> They come back down, they come back up, you're doing your taxes again. Oh, yeah, I like that. Yeah. It's like muscle confusion, but for kids. It's just kid confusion. It's regular kid confusion. <laughs> Stephen, does that help? Yes, very much. Excellent. Thank Excellent. Thank you. Buy a Baba Duke costume. We can lower the house lights now. It's getting a little scary, honestly, to see all those people out there. Uh, thank you so much, Cleveland, for coming to our program. I want to say a huge thank you to Paul and Storm. You can go to their website. I'm assuming it's pollenstore.com. That's right, pollenstorm.com. That's the first time you've ever said it correctly. I know. Well, they, they came the first all the way out. Open for us. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. fair. Uh, we still have some merch out there. I think the pin sets might be gone. There may be like one Buy it before Cincinnati can get their grubby mitts on. It. Yeah. Uh, we have two. Okay. The, poster, the poster is no joke. One of the most amazing it's posters. It's so beautiful. Super had. gorgeous. So uh, we didn't uh, make it. There's so also Pollen Storm merch out there. Please go yes. buy that. Uh, uh, thank you again for, for doing that. That was very special. Also, listen, I know we made a lot of jokes about like people not buying tickets or whatever, but you all coming yeah, out. Yeah, it was all goose. This Y'all is are amazing. fucking amazing. Yeah, you're amazing. Incredible. You're, you're a awesome. great crowd. Thank Just, you so much. And we will obviously... Despite my jokes, we'll obviously come back to Cleveland. We'll just, we'll just do it in a building that is 30% smaller than this <laughs> building. And then it'll work. No, but actually, the people at this building have been amazing. Yeah, the yeah. so Bank St. Peter, thank, thank you all so much. Bank. This place is wild. Yes, um, you're so sweet. Thank you. There's literal, con- there's one single piece of confetti falling from the evil, <laughs> which Don't. considering the ticket sales does seem apropos. <laughs> this is all you get. This is all you get. Uh, thanks also to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the Insert theme song. It's a departure off the album, putting the days to bed. Yes. Thank you to Amanda. Thank you to our daddy. Thanks to Maximum Fun. Thank uh, you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Let's have uh, a... And thank you to our families. Uh, well, our families for hanging out in Great Wolf Lodge. Great Wolf Lodge. You don't have to thank them. 
Uh, here's the final Yahoo. It's sent, in by, it's sent in by Emma Khan. Wow, a hat trick. Oh, 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 sorry. Oh, 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 shit. We have to travel uh, very early in the morning to get back to Cincinnati tomorrow, so we won't be able to hang out after the show. Yes. Uh, so right now we're going to take the second to say, thank you, all of you. Oh, no, you're great. Yeah, you're uh, fine. <laughs> I'm signing, and uh, so we not. won't be able to see you after the show. Yes, but hopefully you got a sign poster. We did a bunch of those before, and if not, uh, maybe next time. So, also, there's voter registration outside. Paul yes. is just texting yes. me. Go do that. Vote. Yes. Okay, final Yahoo. This one is sent in by Emma Khan. Thank you, Emma. It's Emma Kant. Thank you. It's Wait, from Emma are you Kant. here? Are you here? No, I've just fucked it up. Oh, you know her. Oh, cool. Tell her, just tell her thanks. Say hi. How is Emma? Okay, stop. Emma Kant. Kant. No, it's can't. Can't. <laughs> Emma can't. It Sent can't be caught. Shush! <laughs> it's from Yahoo Answers user Sean who asks. That's good. Sean asks, can you milk gushers to make fruit juice? <laughs> my name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. No, my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. <laughs> one, two, one, two, three, five. Hi, everybody. My name is Justin McElroy. I'm Sydney McElroy. We're both doctors. and Nope, just me. Okay, well, Sydney's a doctor, and I'm a medical enthusiast, and we create okay. Sawbones, a marital tour of misguided medicine. Every week, I dig through the annals of medical history to bring you the wildest, grossest, sometimes dumbest, tales of ways we've tried to treat people throughout history. Now lately we do a lot of modern fake medicine because everything's a disaster, but it's slightly less of a disaster every Friday right here on MaximumFun.org as we bring you Sawbones, a marital tour of misguided medicine. And remember, don't drill a hole in your head. Mm-hmm.